Hey everyone, uh, I have a kind of end of the week, here's the news for you guys because there are so many big stories from E3 to MLB The Show being on Game Pass, uh, a whole bunch of crazy stuff, in fact, also further evidence that uh, Sony might really be giving up on Japan due to a new release on phones, it's rather, rather interesting, but uh, before I get into that, hey, I gotta remind you, we do have a giveaway going on. That's it. That's all I'm going to tell you. We're giving away $100 in cash. Head down to the description or pin comment to find out. All right, let's go. Our first story is about E3. So first up, E3 is happening. That's like the number one thing here is we are having E3 this year. Uh, there was a report going out there from Video Game Chronicles yesterday uh, that E3 basically was going to have like a free version and a paid version. And the paid version would have demos behind it. Well, the... ESA has come out to say, uh, no, that's literally not happening at all. Um, everything is going to be free. So if there are demos, they'll be publicly available. Um, that's basically what it sounds like. What the big real, real takeaway here is that ESA is very confident E3 is happening. Uh, they actually are renaming it to the Electronic Entertainment Experience instead of the Expo for this year. So still, you know, E3, but with a different meaning for that last E. Uh, and yeah, it, it's pretty interesting to me. Uh, this does mean we're getting press conferences back. I don't know who's all participating, but press conferences will be there. It's going to be free, all streamed online. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, it's just nice to know that there is E3 happening uh, we'll have to see if it can really live up to E3s of the past. I mean, at this point, based on what we got last summer, it can't really be worse than anything else that happened last summer. Remember the Ubisoft forwards? Remember the Summer Game Fest? Um, remember the no Nintendo Directs? Yeah, it, it really can't be worse than that last summer. So, uh, I'm pretty excited to see what E3 is bringing this year. Our second story is one I mentioned right away at the start, and that is, whoo, and will be the show 21's coming to Game Pass day one. So MLB The Show releases at the end of this month. Uh, it's coming to Game Pass day one. And this is a very interesting experience and has sparked a lot of debate and conversation online. I think there seems to be a lot of confusion around MLB The Show because it was previously exclusive to PlayStation and it's created by a PlayStation owned studio. So what the hell is going on? Well, first off, we already knew it was going to be multi-platform. Uh, there was a deal struck with MLB a few years ago, actually, uh, to extend the current licensing agreement between Sony and MLB to continue to use MLB player like this is MLB stadiums, all that jazz. Basically, uh, the major sports license themselves to be used. So like Madden is licensed with an exclusivity contract uh, to the NFL. The NBA licenses its use for NBA Live and NBA 2K. So yeah, licenses are a thing and they wanted to extend the license so they could keep making it. And MLB this time around said, hey, uh, we're cool if you want to extend the license, but what we're not cool with is the fact that there isn't a viable baseball game on the other platforms. So if we are to renew with you guys, you must agree to make this game multi-platform. And in that agreement, uh, Sony and MLB came to an agreement saying, hey, Sony will publish the game on their platforms, and, well, MLB themselves will publish the game on Xbox. What's interesting about that decision is MLB controls the distribution of the game. They get to decide how it's on Xbox, where it's on Xbox, when it's on Xbox. Basically, Sony can't control how the game is delivered. So, when it was announced for Game Pass today, what that tells you is MLB decided to partake in Game Pass along with the physical copies and the digital copies they'll be selling as well. And you might be, why would they do that? Well, like everybody who's a big AAA developer, why is EA now part of it? Why is Ubisoft part of it? Why did Outriders launch, which I know server's down, uh, but why did Outriders launch on Game Pass? Because Microsoft wrote them a fat check. They wrote a check to baseball. Baseball said, yes, we'll take your money, put it on Game Pass, we're good. So that's really what happened. Uh, so yeah, and will be the shows on Game Pass. Again, really interesting because it's a Sony-made game on Xbox, on Game Pass, which Sony doesn't like and will not make their own version of. Uh, there's been some, some people like uh, you know Greg from Kind of Funny Games out there saying, hey, this is a really bad you know look for Sony and PlayStation Plus. I want to know, like, PlayStation Plus is not the same as Game Pass, guys. I know there's big games on PlayStation Plus. I have PlayStation Plus. I have some of those big games downloaded. But it's not Game Pass. PlayStation Plus is just games with gold, but for PlayStation, it just happens to be better than games with gold. But it's not Game Pass. 
Sony does not have a Game Pass equivalent. So we'll have to see what how this shakes out down the road. I'm very interested to see what the numbers are going to look like, look like between the people who are playing it on Game Pass versus the people who buy the game physically. We finally have like a big name game where uh, that's a that, that's something we can measure because MLB The Show, whether you're into sports games or not, uh, sells a lot of copies every year. It's a big seller for Sony, hence why they wanted to re-up this deal, even though they had to make the game multi-platform. So we'll have to see what happens, but right now MLB The Show is on Game Pass, so I don't have to worry about which platform I'm going to buy the game for anymore because I have Game Pass. Why would I buy a game that I already have access to through a service I'm already paying for? I know, ownership, all that. Who cares about sports games? They come out every year. This next story is another interesting one that just popped up in my timeline today, and that is a new world record was set today involving Mario. And you might be thinking, oh, a speedrun record. No, actually, it's the sale of a game. Uh, it's a world record for the most expensive sold game in video game history and that is an original copy of super mario bros from 1985 uh, still sealed with a 9.6 rating uh so yeah not 10 mint but 9.6 mint uh because 9.6 is, is considered up in the mint range uh yeah completely sealed copy it sold for six hundred and sixty thousand dollars it is the by far and away the most expensive game sold uh, it's also funny because there was an episode with a similar copy on Pawn Stars where the guy asked for a million dollars and Pawn Stars basically laughed him away. That game might actually be worth a million dollars today. So, yeah, this is pretty crazy. Um, Mario gets to have another world record next to his name, although in this case it's just from people buying the original game in a sealed version. But, yeah, this is awesome. Like, I, I, don't, I wish I had $660,000 of disposable income uh, to do this, but... Uh, I still think it's really cool to see the value of retro games. Uh, really, just the value of sealed retro games to be so high because those are the ones that are going to probably last and stand the test of time versus the ones that aren't sealed and are open to the air and all that jazz. So Jeff Keighley announced today, which obviously in lieu of the E3 stuff, he wanted to get his name out there, uh, that Summer Game Fest is coming back this June. Now, the thing is, I don't really know that I care so much. There's going to be game announcements. There's going to be developer interviews. There's going to be music. It's going to be a nice event, but he does it all summer long, like, and not on random days, they're on preset days, but it, it, it always feels like it's long and drawn out and not enough big announcements to have such a long drawn out event all summer. If I had any advice for Jeff Keighley, it would be to take Summer Game Fest and condense it to a week like E3 is. If you would take the entirety of Game Fest, condense it to a week, I think you would actually see a bigger reception and a possible shot to replace E3 uh, by having so much hype in such a short period of time. But you know, extending it all summer is what he's chosen to do again this year. Uh, so June, July, August, there'll be stuff going on for Summer Game Fest. I just, um, we'll have to wait and see. Obviously, we'll have to see, see what announcements come. That's obviously what's most important. So uh, for right now, it's just coming back. We're not really sure what's going to be present in it yet. Uh, but like last year, there were game announcements, there were game trailers, there were developer interviews. So we'll have to wait and see what Jeff Keighley has in store for Summer Game Fest this year. Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga has officially been delayed out of spring. Uh, this is both good and bad news. It's, it's bad news in that, hey, look, this game is something I'm really hyped for and it sucks I gotta wait longer to play it, right? That's always like the bad news with delays is you have to wait longer? No! I saw this game behind closed doors at E3 2019. God, that was a while ago. I saw it behind closed doors, saw a private demo, Guys, this is the best Lego game ever made and potentially the best Star Wars game ever made and they're together as one game. I'm telling you guys, that's how amazing this game looked back in 2019 and the game's still not done. Now, on the other hand, it's also good they delayed the game because we don't need another Cyberpunk 2077 situation. We want a finished product. We want a well-running product on all platforms. Remember, this is coming to Switch. This is coming to Xbox, PlayStation, PC. It's everywhere. So we want this game to run great on everything. So take your time, please. Make sure that that demo I saw behind closed doors back in 2019, that the actual game lives up to it because we're talking open world Star Wars. Like nine planets, it covers all nine of the major films. Um, this is oh, I'm 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 excited. I'm so sucks it's delayed. Not out of 2021, by the way, just out of spring. So maybe they're getting, maybe they're shooting for summer. Maybe they're just dealing with bugs right now. Uh, but hey, I can appreciate a good delay as long as the game ends up working out in the end. So Clap Hands Golf, uh, just released on iOS Arcade. So Apple Arcade, who cares? <laughs> I mean. We don't cover mobile games, really, right? 
Well, except in this case, because this studio, Clap Hands, was the makers of Everybody's Golf. Everybody's Golf has been a Sony exclusive game dating back to 1999. Clap Hands, the, the studio in Japan, has never made a game for any other platform but Sony. Their last game, Everybody's Golf VR, released on in 2019 for PlayStation 4 VR. Hmm. Now this game is also on iOS. This version of the game is not on PlayStation 5, not on PlayStation 4. It's exclusive to Apple Arcade. How the hell did that happen? Well, Sony Japan, their development studio, uh, lost like four figureheads in the last week. They just straight up left the company. Why? Well, Sony has really been de-emphasizing game development in Japan from their own studio since they moved the headquarters of their gaming segment of Sony to California. They're really focused more on Western. Yeah, they'll still lock down contracts with Final Fantasy and stuff, but when it comes to their own internally developed games, they're kind of done with Japan. And we've known this for a while, but it just keeps building up. And this is just further proof of that with this with this game going to you know Apple Arcade not coming at all to, to Sony. It's it's kind of a sign of the times that the company realized, hey, Sony doesn't care about Japan anymore. So why should we care about Sony? Let's let's go to a different platform that's really popular in Japan. Now, obviously, some of us would say, why don't you go to Switch? But I mean, it makes it, it, it makes sense to go to phones as well. Phones are even bigger than anything Switch could ever provide. So. So the numbers are in for Monster Hunter Rise's launch week in Japan. This is actually news, for, again, from yesterday. Briefly wanted to touch upon it because there's, like, some people trying to twist this into being negative or positive, and I'm not sure any way you could slice it other than, hey, it's not bad. Uh, so Monster Hunter Rise is sold out in Japan. Let's start there. Can't find physical copies anywhere. It's, it's sold out. They undershipped. They did not ship enough copies of this game they, they, they could have probably sold 1.5, 1.8 million if they had actually shipped that many copies. Capcom underestimated and didn't ship enough. Maybe they were pushing digital sales. That's a theory out there. I, I don't think that, that holds any water. I just think they did not expect um, these kind of sales, I guess, at launch. Uh, so it sold 1,302,000 units, essentially. Uh, that's a crazy amount of units and would mark one of the biggest launches for Switch in Japan. Now, the thing is, Monster Hunter World's launch for Japan for PlayStation 4 was bigger at 1,350,000 units, but then week two was only 200,000, week three was 100,000, and it quickly dove down because there just isn't that big of a PlayStation 4 audience. Like, 9 million is nothing to scoff at, but also that's a very limited amount of audience to sell to. Switch has 17, 18 million units in Japan, like double the amount already. So uh, it's highly likely going to have a bigger tail of sales, and so it could potentially outsell world now should we personally care as gamers if monster hunter rise outsells world no because that's console war bullshit it's all the same franchise it's selling incredibly well monster hunter always sells incredibly well whether it's on psp vita playstation xbox switch it doesn't matter 3ds like everything monster hunter's on it sells it's a system seller. That's what it is. In fact, speaking of system sales, the Nintendo Switch moved 279,000 units last week. That's a lot of units. It's a lot of units. Um, PlayStation 5, by the way, sold like 60,000, which I know doesn't sound like much in comparison, but that's actually the highest week of sales for PlayStation 5 since launch week in Japan. No major games came out either, so it's kind of interesting to see that happen. Uh, but anyways, yeah, so cool. What, why, why are we talking about this then? Well, I've seen a number of comments on the internet that really upset me. Um, really, really upset me. Comments like, hey, Monster Hunter Rise doesn't need to exist. It's redundant if it can't beat the sales of the world. What? <laughs> They're not the same game. That's like saying we should never have a... a guys, that's it. Monster Hunter World's it. Stick a fork in the series. It's done. We have that game now. We don't need any more Monster Hunter. Fuck you, Capcom. Who needs it? I, oh my god. I, I think we can all agree on the stupidity of that comment. Anyways, uh, that's it for Here's the News today. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this episode. We had so many big news topics. Hopefully I got through it all here for you guys. Made a lot of sense, I hope. Uh, be sure to enter our giveaway uh, for the month. And I love you guys. I'll see you in the next video.